Helena Christensen is probably arguably one of the most beautiful models that came out from the 90s, right? This supermodel was allegedly named after Helen of Troy and said that being named after the most beautiful woman in the world has given her lots to live up to. And if you know the story of Helen of Troy, she was the most beautiful woman in the world that Aphrodite promised her to Paris if, you know, y'all know the story. And I love the movie Troy with Brad Pitt and Orlando Bloom, etc. So I can see it. I can see it. But Helena actually definitely lives up to that name because she is stunning she is gorgeous her eyes the gaze the elegance about her but she is more than just a pretty face this famous model has gone on record saying that modeling does not require the use of her brain which is why she has pursued other interests such as photography and boxing and she is also into nature cooking fitness she's a very down-to-earth type of girl. She's the type that you will find doing cold dippings, walking barefoot in the forest or something. Very down to earth girl. And in today's video, we are going to do a beauty analysis where she reveals all of her ravishing secrets behind how she has even looked the same now in her older age. She aged so beautifully and naturally too. But we're also going to talk about her childhood, her career, and her major accomplishments, as well as her little naughty secret that she used to buy men's used underwear. You heard that right. She used to buy men's used underwear and wear them. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy. I read that headline from the mirror and was like, okay, that's crazy. <laughs> But we're going to talk about that and more. But first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Crean Allude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars through history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so. And if you already subscribed, please turn on your notification bell so you never miss an upload. Now without further ado, let's get into this video. Let's start first with her childhood. So born on a frosty Christmas day, it's so cool. She was born on Christmas day in 1968. Helena Christensen came into the world ready to make her mark. She was the older of two daughters born to Fleming, a Danish father and Elsa, a mother of Peruvian descent in the vibrant city of Copenhagen, Denmark. Her younger sister, Anita, completed their small family. She told Harper's Bazaar, and I quote, the way I was brought up, I was given a lot of self-confidence, but also respect for other people. I think those are the qualities you need. You give your child as much love as you can and still a certain respect in them and you make them feel confident. In this business, that has really helped me feel grounded and independent. I'm very grateful for the way my parents brought me up and hopefully I have extended everything my parents did for me unto my kid, end quote. Young Helena was gifted with a knack for languages that set her apart from her peers. She fluidly spoke Danish, Spanish, English, French, and German, a skill that made her an object of ridicule in school. She got bullied for it. However, she states, and I quote, I'm happy now for the opportunities these skills have brought me, end quote. After the tender age of 17, Helena's radiant beauty won her the Miss Universe Denmark crown in 1986. She represented her country at the Miss Universe 1986 pageant in Panama, further solidifying her status as a rising star. The following year, she entered the Look of the Year 1987 competition, where she emerged as a finalist. Leaving her home behind, she set off for Paris to pursue a career in modeling. She met Karl Lagerfeld within her first week, and the late fashion icon immediately took her under his wing. In 1990, he put her in her first Chanel campaign. It was the start of a long-lasting personal and collaborative relationship with Lagerfeld and Chanel. The 1990s saw her star rise exponentially as she became one of the most sought-after models of her time. Her popularity skyrocketed when she started the music video for Chris Isaac's song Wicked Game in 1990. The sultry video was lauded by MTV as the sexiest video of all time, ranked number four on VH1's 50 Sexiest Video Moments, and placed at number 13 on VH1's 100 Greatest Videos. In a historic moment and one of her biggest career highlights to date, Christensen was handpicked as the first ever campaign girl for Prada in 1991. 
1992, she became the face of Revlon Cosmetics. Her striking features graced the covers of high fashion magazines like Vogue, Elle, Harper's Bazaar, and W, and she became the highlight of fashion campaigns for luxury brands including Chanel, Versace, Lanvin, Prada, Sonia Raquel, Hermes, Valentino, and Karl Lagerfeld. One audacious campaign showcased her on a 20 by 40 feet billboard in Times Square with her wearing nothing with just a strategically placed banana leaf, you know, covering her lady bits. Christensen was one of the original angels for Victoria's Secret, sharing the spotlight with supermodels Tyra Bank, Karen Mulder, Daniela Pestova, and Stephanie Seymour. Over the years, she has continued to model, appearing on the covers of Vogue Italia and Portuguese Vogue in 2016, British Tatler in 2018, and French Elle in 2018. In September 2017, she joined fellow supermodels Claudia Schiffer, Naomi Campbell, Cindy Crawford, and Carla Bruni to close a Versace Spring Summer 2018 fashion show, a tribute to the late Gianni Versace. She also strutted down the runway for Dolce & Cabana and starred in their spring-summer 2019 ad campaign. Beyond modeling, Christensen had ventured into entrepreneurship. She launched her own clothing line, Christensen and Seegerson, with her childhood friend, Leif Seegerson. The duo previously owned Boutique, a boutique in New York's West Village. And in 2012, she created a lingerie collection, Helena Christensen for Triumph, for the UK-based lingerie brand. Christensen is also an accomplished photographer whose work has been featured in Nylon, Marie Claire, and Elle. Her exhibition a Quiet Story, curated by Jim Cook, debuted at the Locust Gallery in Rotterdam in 2006 and Hotel Arena in Amsterdam in 2007. And in 2016, she was announced as a global explorer for the luxury collection hotels and resorts. She partnered with Oxfam in 2009 to document the impact of climate change in Peru, her mother's birthplace. She also launched a second fashion target breast cancer campaign, selling designer t-shirts to raise money for Ireland's Action Breast Cancer and Europa Donna, Ireland to support younger women with breast cancer. Helena Christensen had indeed proven herself as more than just a pretty face, right? Now let's talk about this man's underwear debacle. So Helena, the renowned supermodel who has graced countless runways for the world's leading fashion houses, recently shocked her fans with a quirky revelation. The Danish beauty confessed that during her adolescence, she would buy used man's underwear from a secondhand shop and wear them herself. This unusual fashion choice was paired with elegant ball gowns, creating a unique and bold look that the young Helena found entertaining. In an eye-opening interview with Hello Fashion Monthly, Christensen admitted that her peculiar taste in clothing stemmed from her fondness for secondhand items. She said, and I quote, I didn't have any fashion magazines, but as a teenager, one of my favorite stores was a secondhand one, she explained. This early fascination with pre-loved clothes was not merely a face, but a testament to her belief in the importance of recycling garments. Christensen found delight in the process of rummaging through racks of clothes that once belonged to strangers, saying, I feel so much joy going into a little store and looking through all these pieces that belong to somebody else, perhaps many, many decades ago, she shared. For her, each garment carried a piece of history, a story woven into its fabric by its previous owners. She expressed her deep appreciation for this aspect of secondhand shopping, saying, and I quote, the history of them and the story they bring in their fabric of the women or men, because I buy both men's and women's clothing that have carried them. I love the thought of that, end quote. Her signature look during her teenage years was a mix of men's underwear combined with elaborate ball gowns. I would buy men's underwear and ball gowns and pair them together. That was my look. It was funny, she recalled. This unconventional style was a far cry from glamorous outfits she would don later in her career as a professional model. However, it was only after stepping into the realm of professional modeling that Christensen started embracing more sophisticated and elegant attire. The world of high fashion 
fashion with its endless array of stunning designs and luxurious fabrics eventually won her over. And despite this, her love for secondhand clothing, along with the stories they tell, remain a significant part of her personal style narrative. Comment below, what are your thoughts? That's just interesting. That's all I'm gonna say. But what are your thoughts? <laughs> now let's talk about her beauty secrets, which is what I know many of you guys care for, because she is very detailed about this. So when applying her own makeup for day-to-day -day life, this famous personality does not use makeup brushes. She prefers her pinky fingers as an applicator. Her go-to makeup is a red lip and kitten liner. Best beauty hack, she uses lipsticks on her cheeks and as her eyeshadow as well. I do that also. I am definitely a fan of red lips that I cannot run away from, she said. I think it's so beautiful. I love that you can have a completely natural naked face and then have vibrant red lips. There's something so crazy and amazing about that. It's the easiest thing to apply without applying anything else. And it makes a huge difference. I Love Velvet Ribbon by Lisa Eldridge, end quote. So when it comes to her physique and her youthfulness, she stated in interviews with both Harper's Bazaar, Vogue, and Netta Porter, saying, I quote, I love sleeping. I feel absolutely the best when I have had good sleep. That's my number one priority. I actually think it's the number one priority for most people. It just changes your entire day when you haven't had enough sleep and also when you have, end quote. It's a great feeling getting into a perfectly made bed. So I always make it up before I leave the house. Every morning, even on the coldest of days, I air out my room and shake out my comforter and pillows. She continues saying, I wake up by splashing my face with cold water, then hot water, then using products, and I kind of look forward to it. I also massage my skin to wake it up and stimulate blood flow. I do the same thing on my body. I do the whole brushing and scrubbing thing. Then I do some stretches and exercises. It sounds like a lot, but it becomes a very organic thing to do that. That doesn't take more than five minutes. I typically wake up around 7.30 feed my dog Kuma, and then take him for a walk to my local coffee bar. My favorite breakfast is porridge cooked with milk and topped off with banana, brown sugar, and a big lump of melting butter in the middle. I do boxing and conditioning three times a week and yoga twice a week. They keep my body strong, firm, and toned. I started enjoying working out when I began to understand anatomical aspect of it and learned how to recruit muscle groups. I recently started pole dancing. It is the hardest physical activity I have ever done in my life. And I have so much awe and respect for pole dancers. It's like virtual ballet to me. So the perception of it as CD doesn't even annoy me. It goes right over the top of my head. To people who think like that, I want to say, well, you just go try it, end quote. Being in nature is what makes me deeply grateful, humble, joyful, and curious. To feel the strongest and healthiest that I can in both mind and body. Being in nature helps move, trek, climb, jump in cold rivers, or breathe in fresh air. Feel the wind and sun. The elements have so many healthy benefits. I don't have any rules, so if I was going to put having a healthy approach to life and balance into words, it would be, how do I ensure that I can keep eating as much as possible and still stay strong and fit. That's where hardcore workouts come in. Then I can still totally indulge in my obsession with food. To someone who is worried about their weight, I wouldn't talk so much about eating as I would say, just go box. Eat whatever you like within reason and deal with any concerns in a physically active way. I love food more than anything. Me too, girl. Me too. <laughs> more than my family and friends and almost as much as my dog, she says. I could eat pasta every night with tons of Parmesan or a few white truffles thrown in. I also love Japanese food and I always think I'm eating so clean. Before I order a hundred different options, I adore my mother's Peruvian food, which I grew up with. And of course, Danish cuisine. I always look forward to going home so I can bite into a real Danish. Anything else is just pretending. There are also vitamins and supplements that are essential. At some point each year, I go and have my vitamin levels checked, which is a really good way of learning what you might need. There are so many supplements out there that you can literally drown in them. It is very confusing, especially with social media. 
after work, I like to relax on my couch with the fire on, a movie, a glass of wine, and some cheese. I love a bath and put in salts and herbivore coconut milk bath soak. I like to light a candle and ponder life and death as I soak. It's rare that I don't clean my face before bed, but it's not a massive issue for me if I forget. I've recently been using a lot of coconut oil, yellow turmeric mask, and after emptying the espresso machine, I put the coffee grinds into a bowl and place it in the shower so I can use them to wash my body. When putting products into your skin, you definitely feel so much better if you use ones that you know are clean and healthy. It's also the little changes in all areas of our lives that in the end will have a big impact on the world. Hopefully that is something that we will instill in the next generation. I listen to the jazz and classical station on my radio and on my nightstand, you'll find a Stephen King novel, my glasses and strange love NYC dead of night perfume, which is super seductive and full of the purest oud and Damascus rose. Find humor in difficult times. It might sound a little corny, but I think you have to be grateful that you are able to feel emotions. Although it's not nice feeling down, I think it's important to remember that if something can affect you that deeply, maybe it's a gift. For me, a healthy dose of self-irony works, but it isn't for everyone. Humor is such a strange thing because I really think whatever scares or threatens to overwhelm you will come out as humor. Very heavy subjects bring it out because you either get really down or you try to laugh about it. You certainly need a good sense of humor to deal with what is going on in the world right now. Back home, we actually talk about having a sense of humor that is lower than a pregnant aunt. On what she would say to her younger self, she said, and I quote, I think I managed to do pretty well, but I would say keep your feet firmly planted on the floor and your head high on your shoulders. Stand up straight, be confident, and go through this journey with a lot of self-irony and humor. I think I did that. More or less, I must have had it in the back of my mind, maybe because of my upbringing. Coming from Denmark, you are encouraged to look at all the little things that are important and beautiful. That makes you happy. It's not about the big things and always stay humble, end quote. How lovely, right? Lovely. Now, in terms of her relationship, Helena Christensen had been in relationships with Paul Banks, Guy Berryman, John Bon Jovi, Rasmus Walter Henson, Norman Reedus. Together, they have a son born in October 1999, Mick Hucknall, and Michael Hutchin. Helena Christensen is rumored to have hooked up with Josh Hartnett, Heath Ledger, Jack Houston, Orlando Bloom, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Chris Isaac. But this is all I have for her magnificent story. She is just all about health and taking care of herself and I saw videos on her home she has like the cutest nature cottage core type vibey home full of like plants and flowers and greenery and just open space oh I love her home a lot just vibes comment below what other supermodels you guys would like me to add to my list and comment below your thoughts especially about the male underwear if you like the music you're listening to the link is in the description I love you guys so much thank you for tuning in until next time